Well, good. Well, I'm just going to ask you a few questions and we'll just talk like you talk. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. uh, so, so Jonathan, why is it important for you to invest in your people in a 2020 market? That's a good question. You know, uh, for us, when we, we engaged with Forest Performance Group, we knew it was the, the best I had seen. I mean, uh, Westwood has always believed in empowering and training our team and giving them the best uh, training because the demographic we're in, a lot of people don't get the higher education opportunity. So we recognize this company, we need to do that and step in and be, be the source and the opportunity for them to, to grow as individuals. Um, so we've always kind of had training opportunities out there. Uh, we've used several other, both in sales, construction, other um, trainers and other programs, and none of them have really worked. Um, FPG was probably the first one that we got that not just told us what to do, but how to do it. And didn't do the hoorah, yah, yah seminar and then leave and then check back with you three months later. You know, um, it, it actually chunked everything down into steps and showed us how to do it step by step, had to follow up so that it got ingrained and people could embody it and execute on it. And uh, in 2020 for us, for RGB specifically, is we were a growing division. And I, I'm new at my job. My sales manager was new at his job. My production manager was new at his job. And we're like, we needed to grow. We needed not just the what, but the how. And uh, management at the time had a lot of personal issues and wasn't gonna be available and stated, hey, I'm not gonna be there to help you. You guys, it's sink or swim for you guys for the next few years. So um, for us and that specific situation, we needed training. We needed growth and we recognized it and wanted it and grabbed onto it. And uh, it's worked out fantastic for us. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so what about the mindset component? How important is the mindset component that we incorporate within the warrior selling process? So uh, the mindset, right? Uh, beliefs uh, affect uh, people's behaviors because of their mindset, right? So the mindset component um, transformed the way that us as managers operate and coach our team. And it transitioned us away from that fear-based mentality that, hey, there's consequences if you don't do your job. And it, it transformed, put them from that have to to want to state because we coach to a belief we went through and did your uh, four steps um, to the four questions that change your life. The what do you want to do, by when, how, um, uh, 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 who's helped you need along the way, and why do you want to do it. We went through that with each person and then came up with our belief system together as a team, agreed to it, everyone signed off on it. And then now as a coach, I'm in a position where, hey, we agreed to the standard. Do you feel that what you're doing right now is, is, is uh, living up to that belief system that we all agreed that equals success? For, for our company and for you individually, for your life and what you want to grow to. And people on their own could recognize that, no, it's not. And I, I do want to step up. And that, that mindset um, transformed everything because the stress is gone. The stress is gone from the manager. The stress is gone from the person that I need to perform on my job. And then it had a, a compounding behavior, exponential effect in that now creativity could exist where it didn't before. And now they're able to come to their manager and go, hey, I know we've been doing it this way for so long because of this and this, but I think I found a new way that would save a lot of time for everybody. And we had a lot of those opportunities pop up. And we found that, man, we became extremely efficient. And it all came from that concept of mindset. Uh, and so I, I'm assuming that that's, right, that's the benefit of the mindset, you know, when you, when you ask about mindset. But that, that was a huge key. Um, that we experienced. I'm really not even noticing that until now we're talking about it, but yeah, that, that was huge. Uh, what about the, what about the simplicity or the, the, or what about the process, the five, four, three process? Gotcha. How is that? Five, five, four, three for us is a, is a little bit new, right? Uh, Cause we did the seven steps to starting strong and uh, it's definitely sim simpler to chunk it down. All the same components are there. Um, and speaking from personal experience, executing it in the field on the seven step basis, um, that changed the way uh, sales happen in that it takes less time to make a sale. It increased the capacity for the salesperson to be able to sell. So uh, we actually have two hour time slots now for all our sales team because if they can't do it within two hours, 
they haven't really followed the process properly because it should be very easy for them in two hours to um, start from the position of strength, identify what's important to the customer, speak to those specific needs uh, based on their category that they discover there, and then come to a resolution whether it is going to be able to be solved that day or it's going to require follow up. It should only take two hours. Whereas before it was like three be back opportunities with the customer to find these questions and what else do they have out? We, we didn't know what we didn't know. We, did, we didn't realize you could chunk it all down to 13 relevant decisions. We did. God, game changer, you know. Um, so that's been absolutely fantastic for our team. Increase their capacity to be able to not just make sales, but follow up. Because there's only so many they can really handle at a time, especially if we're building the order. And so it's increased their capacity. It's identified a lot of issues that would have come up normally during construction that happen now up front. So there's less for them to have to deal with during construction. And so uh, most of my sales team went from being able to handle four or five dirt deals at a time to nine. So it's, it's been great. Yeah. Uh, what about the, the relevancy of the program in comparison to maybe other uh, sales training programs you've, you've been a part of? Well, huge in the fact that there's an online process. I mean, I think that that's for um, a lot of, I, I'm, after being in FBG, it's like, duh, why didn't they have it online? Like, why, why isn't there, a, you know, this is the whole reason why it's working right now is because not only do I ha have someone once a week that I can talk to about it and reference back and, and speak to an expert, but now I've got video sessions to circle back to, circle back to. And then my sales manager can now tell me, hey, did you do the lesson this week? Are you sure? Because based on our conversation right now, I'm not sure you really grasp the concept of the five ways. And uh, specifically starting from a position of strength. And is, if it's not important to the customer, it should be important to you. Because we're working through that. Maybe they're dealing with a hyper pro. But uh, uh, having the online center is all your lessons chunked down into bite-sized pieces. And it gives opportunity for us to absorb it and embody it bit by bit. And uh, your, your success winds up coming without even realizing it because you're just doing the lessons once a week. And uh, it's, it's been incredible to see the sales team. They, they don't even recognize it. I'm going to circle back and we start talking about it. We got some of the old lessons, right? And we did the 543 uh, transition. So it's a whole new module. And they see that on the old one and they're clicking through the pages and it's dawning on them, you know, like, gosh, back when I was doing the seven steps and now I got the five. You know, I'm a different person. You know, Bonnie specifically, she's like, man, I, I went from, you know, her, her husband had surgery. She became the head breadwinner when she wasn't that before. She was just doing it for kicks because she didn't want to be at home anymore. So now having a better lifestyle, selling houses, her husband is able to take the time he needed for surgery. And how he went into the mortgage business, because he's like, shoot, you know, my wife's this good, then I'm going to do it. And now they're both succeeding, you know. Uh, so, it, yeah, it's, it's incredible. That chunking down piece, it's a slow fade. You don't even realize the transformation as it's happening until a year later, you turn on the back. You're like, wow, I'm a whole different person. So um, most other, uh, I wouldn't say gurus, but sales trainers, they don't chunk it down like that. And they don't give you the resources we need like we've had at FPG to actually follow through and execute on it. Because most of the people on my team wanted to, but they just couldn't. They needed, they didn't have A, the self-discipline to do it and chunk it down, and B, uh, it wasn't easy for them to do it. And this makes it easy for you to just do the steps, follow through, and transformation comes. What about... Um, how, how have you seen, Jonathan, how have you seen, you know, people's kind of personal lives change um, in front of you? Because, you know, I believe there's no such thing as business problems. There are personal problems that affect our business. And so have you seen, have you seen the, the, like the people change throughout the process? Yeah. Yeah. Um, gosh, there, there's so many different directions I can go. All good information on that, right? But um it, it gets emotional when you're seeing the behavior change in people. And uh, <clears throat> not just when the behavior changes, and, and this is how you know FPG works, because it's not just one individual that's changing, multiple individuals are changing. And now that they're being empowered to do the right thing, and because they're doing the right thing, success is coming, they automatically in the culture get set up and seen as a leader or a team leader, and people want to start behaving like them. And so they defend the culture and, and the behavior styles that they're seeing in those individuals. And, and bad people leave on their own because they're getting pressured out by the culture. And uh, all of a sudden, your company becomes a breeding ground for those who want to be successful. 
and those who are willing to do the work to be successful are going to be attracted to you like a moth to a flame and and uh, be victims in a good sense you know that now all of a sudden they they get um uh planted in a system that feeds them what they need to be the best that they can be in this industry and uh, man it's uh, the specific from single moms having what they need recovering from divorce to uh and having the income that they need and the lifestyle that they need to support their family and the kids to to um men who have been uh moved from whole, totally different states and just found their way to us on indeed uh not all of them stay you know i had a couple leave but but uh leave for the right reasons because they realized this wasn't for them um but they they recognize a pattern for success and they wanted to be able to repeat it somewhere else and uh so there there's a uh an embodiment that gets to happen here where you just don't get it anywhere else and it changes the lives and it makes me as a manager feel like really really good like my contribution to society every day is my job whereas normally you got to go and build a house for someone for free you know to to feel that sense of contribution but every day when i wake up and i get to come to work i get to say that hey i, I am contributing to the betterment of everyone's life that gets to work for me at this company and it's it's a great feeling it's awesome what about the coaching component? Because a lot of programs, you know, they just have the sales training piece, but they don't require, like we require a company also has to do the leadership sales coaching piece. Yeah. And so how important is that piece? So that's, that's really important. When we first started the program, um, I had a particular sales coach that, that wasn't going to make it. And, and you could see, and it was really, she wasn't, uh, she was pretending to do the, the sales leadership part. And, uh, and, and it was coming out, it was pretty obvious as time went on that she wasn't really grasping. She was just saying what she needed to say to keep it going and keep her job going. She was playing to cruise. And uh, once we got a coach and, and, and my, she was replaced with someone from one of my soldiers, one of the sales team, um, that understood the sales warrior training program. So it was a very easy transition into the sales leadership program at that time, which we had implemented. And once he was in place, I finally got it. Like, cause I felt I had to do everything. You know, when the sales leader, I was having to do all the sales leadership training. I was having to chunk it down and give it to it piece by piece and turn on the sales team and give it to him a little bit piece by piece. Once, once he stepped in and got it, it was kind of like me as a division president, I can sit back now and just check in with him weekly as I'm learning it and really understand. And now I've got someone who's actually feeding back to me a whole different viewpoint that I didn't get from the lesson. And we're growing as individuals and seeing a totally different um, lesson from the one lesson, because you know, two best viewpoint of a picture is from two different angles, really four, but two different angles, right? So uh, it, it uh, allows me to know that my sales team has found their success without me having to do it myself and get in there and be the helper. And, and, uh, and it's allowed me basically to, to delegate that success and the pattern for success to someone else who is capable of now doing it. And he wouldn't have been able to do it. He wouldn't know what to do, but not how to do it. And uh, that sales leadership component, if you're a division president, man, it, it, changes, it changes your game. Because now I can focus on finding demand for all the new sales that we're getting uh, to increase that volume because you can have to when you do FPG. And uh, I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't have a sales leader that bought into the program and didn't have your sales leadership coaching. Because the success is now sustainable. It's not just when I step in there and make them do it for a month. It, it, there's some follow through there. So it's fantastic. It's awesome. But my key is making sure I hold the sales leader account. So yeah. If I didn't hold my account where it wouldn't happen. But yeah. Awesome. Um, what about um, <clears throat> a couple more questions? What, what about um, the impact that, um, what about the impact that it's made on the culture itself? How has it affected like the, the, the internal energy and vibe in the organization? Well, gosh, so one of the things I get a lot when, when FPG was first brought on, you know, uh, we had to do the sales warrior cry at the end of the sales meeting. And, and even for me, I'm like, oh, I don't know, I, I can scream, I am a warrior, you know, like out loud, really, um, at the end of this. And so uh, at first, it was kind of like the energy, hoorah, yeah, yeah, good feeling, you know, I don't know, I don't know what to do. Um, but as we got into a repetition of doing it, as we started working it and seeing some success, I, I, 
I, I have a hard time finishing a meeting without doing some kind of cry. Have someone leaves out, have someone, and it gets the energy going, and and uh, we're, we're aware of the transformation cycle because we didn't use a fear-based motivating uh, system to hold people accountable. We got to bring awareness to a situation, let them express a positive intention. Then we can agree on compassion for the exact positive intention and together find something that is a solution to bring us to the results that we need uh, and agree upon that and get it out. Whereas before it was like, no, nope, don't do that, do this. You know, I'm right, you're wrong. And that now I got to defend myself if I was wrong and you did it. And you know, it's that, that energy just builds and builds and builds because it's a shared feeling of success. Whereas success seems to trickle up to just one person and they're responsible for it all. It, it's a team environment now that, that goes all the way down to the very bottom of the word chart. And, and you can feel it in your toes, so to speak. Um, and, and it's positive energy uh, versus, versus uh, purely greed-based because success can only mean money now, but it's a lifestyle, you know, that, that breathes to success and everybody gets to embody it and feel it, so yeah. That's awesome. Did I answer your question? I didn't yeah, of course, of course. Okay. <laughs> um, so, you know, some of the, some of the concerns or one, one concern that sometimes, you know, future customers have is, is they go, well, you know, how are the how are the veterans going to take this, and am I going to lose a bunch of people? And you know, what what advice would you give them? Um, so I did. I, I I lost I lost some people, um, but you know what? At the same time, it it revealed that I had people on my team the whole time that were capable of being a veteran or not a veteran, but a superstar salesperson. Uh, because it turns out your veterans, a lot of them, without us realizing it, and once we understand the FPG process and you explain it, that they're playing to compete. And, and a lot of your successful people can hide in a culture that, re that is focused on results uh, and rewards people just for the results, not the process, right? And once you start transforming your company to where you're celebrating and rewarding people for the process, um, you're... Some of your, in my case, the veterans that I had and, and people, the salespeople, uh, got exposed. That they had some bad practices going on. They got them to where they were the number one uh, salesperson. And now all of a sudden, they're leaving because they're they're getting exposed. People are starting to realize it. But you didn't see that my numbers went up instead of down because now all these people that were capable and wanted to do good could freely without someone trying to sabotage or make them look like, you know, that they're worse than they really were or putting them down. For doing well um and as a result that culture there's an exponential factor in in your in your revenue that'll come with that because more and more people get attracted to this system specifically in sales where they get rewarded for doing good things and then customers turn around and go hey westman treated me right go to them so now you got referrals that are just pouring in and it changes the feeling not just for your sales team but your customers as well and and the growth that hits you out of nowhere, all of a sudden you're looking and like, oh my gosh, you need to increase capacity because, you know, without sacrificing quality. And now your struggle is capacity and quality versus trying to get the sales to, to reach capacity. So uh, my message to you would be embrace it, do it. Uh, it could be hard for about three months, but that's totally worth it for a lifetime of, of creating a cash cow. <laughs> well, that leads to my next question. Uh, what kind of uh, success or, or uh financial impact has it made on your organization? Well, you know, the thing that used to keep me up at night was, uh, gosh, how do I get my next sale to pay the bills? You know, and, and uh, so um, that, that is not the case anymore. Uh, the thing that keeps me up at night is how do I find enough land to keep these guys, you know, happy or get a less one so they can make more sales. Um, so tremendous, tremendous on the revenue side. Um, and, and not just revenue, but but my net margins mean, because uh, everyone's as wants to do what's right. They understand what's to do right. They're thinking like an owner, and they're making the right decisions, and not trying to cover their mistakes, but they kind of reveal them and expose them. And uh, it allows us to deliver a product. Um, gosh, and we, we've actually been a little more picky, I guess, with some of our customers because we can right now. Um, and it's allowed us to focus on operations in a way that's, we're, we're doing a step up right now where we're going from three houses a week to, man, I need to get to five. But as a team, we know, even the sales team, they're like, well, let's not jump right away to five because now you're going to sacrifice quality. Let's go to four. We'll be a little picky, 
by the customers that we get, uh, increase our sales prices a little bit uh, so that we can pay for some of the operational things that we need to increase our capacity to five, uh, software, equipment, that kind of thing, versus just hiring more people to fill the gap so that now I can pay everybody more and pay them beyond what they're worth, worth it money, um, and, and grow us to five. Uh, and so it's been healthy revenue growth versus that because uh, I've seen it in the past where boom, all of a sudden you jump from 100 to 180 homes from one year to the next, all the success, but it was market sales. And your net margin didn't really go up all that much because it was sloppy and you got a bunch of warranty claims and uh, you built it into your product um, and, and you made a lot of people upset and you got guys out there now on your team that really don't know what they're doing, but they're just there to fill the spot. Um, that, that's not the case because the culture won't allow it. Uh, if you're doing it right and uh, they're going to want to grow the right way and uh, to me it's sustainable growth versus overnight boom success and, and but making it sloppy so it's awesome and your, your number your number went quite up so from March of 2020 so uh -huh. now we're in April but in March of 2020 uh, how much uh, what was your year-over-year -year change from March of 2019 oh gosh uh, so there's a lot of factors that play into that right um, so our, our goal was 32 sales for, for the first quarter. And it really should have been 28 because that 32 was based on having two communities online that we didn't actually have online. And yet we still, we hit 37 sales without those two communities. So, I, I mean, we, we blew our sales goals out of the water um, beyond our business plan. And then the year before, not only did we have Oh, gosh, I sent it to you. I can't remember off the top of my head. What was it? 24? Something it was 24 like sales. And, and not only that, but the margins were terrible. And, uh, and, and the, the sales leader I had at the time was, was actually like an enemy of construction because I had to blame construction for everything. Whereas now with the culture and the process and, and the buy-in and the transformation cycle and everything, sales is seen as an asset. Construction sees sales team members as an asset. And they have a process and a method now for dealing with confrontation using the awareness cycle or the transformation cycle. And, uh, and, and as a result, they've been on the same page from the beginning, whereas it turning into a conflict and I got to get everybody in my office kind of why they're arguing. Um, so it's been less stress. We beat our sales goals and a great margin. Uh, it hasn't been sloppy at all. Uh, and, yeah, and I actually, when we hit these sales goals, I was gone for two weeks. I went to go pick up an RV in Florida and, you know, drove back with my wife. And whereas the, just to get those 24 sales, I was out there pounding the ground helping get sales and getting a couple myself the year before. So um, just just to say that not only did we blow it out of the water isn't enough. It's it's the, 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 the fact that it required less stress and more effort from the division president. Uh, you had a sales manager who felt like success and was enabled to get to a position where he could make a lot of money. Uh, to be able to hit these numbers because of our bonus program and your sales team who's all making sales and happy and you're not worried about losing sales team members to the construction in fact or to the competition in fact competitions people are knocking on your door you know offering it saying if they have any opening uh, and that was all with us having two communities that we didn't have the year before um, so yeah it's tremendous that's awesome all right final question um, so one concern that that uh, sometimes people have is the time commitment that they'll say, you know, Jason, you're really gonna, you know, you're, you're gonna make the salespeople be out of the field for, you know, three calls a month and all these seminars and, and do all these videos and training and, you know, aren't, aren't they, don't they need to be out there selling? And, and how would you respond to the time commitment? So you're, you're gonna have a huge return on your investment for the time. I mean, that, that's just obvious as a statement, right? From me to say it, but, but how, right? How are you going to see this return? Um, you've got to deliver on it. Um, I, I don't want to say that the time that you invest is very minimal, but it is, especially if you're going to step in and learn it for yourself as a leader. It, 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 it was a lot of work for me up front, uh, but I was doing the sales warrior training. I was doing the sales leadership training, and we're doing the executive playbooks, the beginning of that back then. So, and I was at the time, the division president and the sales manager and the closing coordinator. So uh, I, I didn't sleep. 
you know, so for me to say, oh yeah, the, the time for me in that time it was a lot. It it was a lot. Um, but when you when you've done two weeks of it, um, you recognize that this is the answer to get to the point where it's going to take less time. It is an investment, but it will pay off as long as you're holding people accountable and you're attracting and, and encouraging the right people on your team to learn it and grow with it. Uh, it, it will pay off for that. I don't, I'd have a hard time sitting down with someone and saying that um, I didn't have it harder than they did if I pull up my balance sheet and if I pull up my income statement and six months of history and say, this is where I started. This was my org chart. This is what I was doing. And what do you have here? I would have a hard time, I think, finding someone else that, that wouldn't be even lower than I was when I started. Uh, and it, it's worth it. I mean, it. It could be a lot for you. In my case, it was because of all the hats I had to wear and what I had going on, but, but it paid off. I mean, the doing just chunking it down bit by bit pays off. It actually got to the point where two months in, I asked my trainer, hey, can you unlock the rest of the sales leadership? I need to know what's coming up ahead of time for the rest of the year so I can get ahead. And I, and I spent probably three days of just like a fast of FPG, just give me everything one by one, put it in a binder, figure it out, see how it all ties together because I'm, I'm training my team now. And uh, that was that was intense. That was definitely worth it. But um, uh, it it's very minor today looking at it with an org chart that's healthy. <laughs> uh, the amount of time that, that you have to invest, that your team has to invest, specifically your salespeople get to invest, is going to pay off in the end because they're able to take the maybe 10 hours to take something to get a sale of meeting the customer, have them come, leave, come back, leave, come back, and then finally close them and then have a bunch of issues pop up during construction because they didn't answer all 13 relevant decisions. And uh, God, I'd say like one in three easy, one in three ratio. By the time they learn the FPG process, um, they're gonna save two thirds of their time. They're, they're gonna be making the sales and having at least two thirds of their time to be gone. It'll only take one third to get the sale and maintain it. So it's definitely worth it. That's awesome.